The Steelers might ease their star running backs workload a bit while the Raiders can't get one of their stars onto the field at all. I'm Joe Dolan, and this is the Fantasy Points Daily Lineup for Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. It's time for the FantasyPoints.com Daily Lineup. Staying on top of the latest news and updates around the NFL. Rise and shine, folks. We're taking the field. Here's your host, FantasyPoints.com's Joe Dolan. Starting at quarterback today is the commander's Carson Wentz. In a development that will surprise no one, Wentz is still struggling with accuracy issues during his first camp with the commanders. The athletics Ben Standig described his issues bluntly. Quote, quarterbacks throwing to receivers against air, meaning with no defense, is the football equivalent of a layup line. Yet Wentz routinely has bricked passes in various directions, overthrowing or firing too far out front has been the most common issue for Wentz. Now, Standig wrote that it's not an every play issue, and that's certainly in line with what we've seen from Wentz recently. Remember, for all the well-earned grief he got for his 2021 season with the Colts, he still threw 27 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. It's just that those interceptions were often baffling, and he also missed throws that weren't intercepted. I think the one to uh, T.Y. Hilton uh, in the second-to-last game of the season might come to mind. It's also worth noting, though, that even at his best, his would-be MVP campaign in 2017, Wentz was never a precision passer, but rather a strong-willed playmaker who created explosive plays. It's just that the strong will to make a play in recent years has drifted too far into a stubbornly dumb desire to make a play. And there's a really thin line between the two. Wentz must fix that or he's not going to be starting for long. Standing also noted that Wentz's deep ball has stood out as something that will be part of offensive coordinators Scott Turner's offense. That too makes sense. Scott is his father, Norv's boy, after all, and Norv Turner loved to base his offense around the run game and the deep pass. It's one of the main reasons the commanders went out and got Carson Wentz. Standing wrote that while rookie wide receiver Jahan Dotson has been a standout in camp, Wentz hasn't gotten his timing down with Terry McLaurin, who obviously was holding out during the spring period for a new contract. They haven't had enough time, really, to acclimate uh, to each other. Coach Ron Rivera told reporters he's not worried about Wentz, but he wants to see Wentz against a live defense in the commander's preseason opener. Unfortunately for Rivera, we've seen Wentz against live defenses the last couple of years, and there's nothing shocking about these reports from camp if we're basing our analysis on those couple years. At our first running back spot is a first-round pick for fantasy because of his workload. But could that workload shrink? The Steelers are looking to slightly reduce running back Najee Harris's snap count with running backs coach Eddie Faulkner suggesting about seven fewer plays per game compared to last season as a reasonable target, Mark Cavalli of The Athletic reports. This comes on the heels of Harris missing about a week of practice with a foot issue picked up when a teammate stepped on him. It's a minor issue, but the Steelers are taking care of it. It's a specific number, though, that seven snaps per game for Faulkner to throw out there, and it seems that the Steelers are looking to keep Harris around 50 or fewer snaps this year if you consider that he averaged slightly more than 57 snaps per game last season. Harris averaged .39 uh, touches per snap and .3 fantasy points per snap last season, which translates, if you you knock that down, to a loss of about three touches and 2.1 fantasy points per game if the Steelers stick to what they are saying they want to do. Now, Najee Harris can make up for his potential reduction in snaps and touches with more efficiency, but the lighter workload would have knocked him from the RB8 with 17.7 fantasy points per game to the RB12 with 15.6 in 2021, presuming he didn't get more efficient with the loss of snaps. It is, of course, concerning that Harris's massive workload is one of the reasons he's a top 15 fantasy pick in the first place. Harris did play 980 snaps last year, which led all running backs. Here's the rub, though. If he played seven fewer snaps per game last season, he would have played 861 snaps, which would have led all running backs last season. Second was Ezekiel Elliott with 810. The only back in the last seven-plus seasons to play more snaps in an individual season than Najee Harris last year was Christian McCaffrey, who played a ridiculous 1,056 snaps in 2019 in one fewer game than Harris had. 
that truly was an incredible fantasy season. And please stay healthy, CMC. The point is that a modest subtraction for Najee, even up to 10 snaps per game, isn't a big deal for the number one reason he's being drafted for fantasy, the sheer size of his role. The biggest issue would be if the snaps he loses come on passing downs, but given human tortoise Benny Snell has been working almost exclusively as the number two back in camp, I can't imagine Najee will be coming off the field in passing situations. And if the Steelers get even slight improvement from their offensive line or quarterback situation, Najee's efficiency could rise to the point where a slightly smaller workload doesn't matter at all. And in fact, it might help him. We head to Duval for our next running back spot. Sorry, it's early in the morning. I'm not exactly uh, in, in the mood to be shouting Jaguar stands. James Robinson handled reps with the first team offense at Monday and Tuesday's practice. John Shipley of SI.com reports another step of his recovery from a torn Achilles. It's starting to look like Robinson has an excellent chance to be ready for the regular season. In fact, it might be a surprise if he isn't ready at this stage. While Achilles tears used to be career enders or at least career alterers for running backs, Cam Akers completely shattered the mold by returning in less than six months from his last season to play in the playoffs for the Rams. Robinson is now seven months removed from his injury and will be eight months removed come week one. Still, our Dr. Edwin Porras hasn't thought he's looked explosive in the limited video we've seen from Jaguars camp. That also matches up with what we saw from Akers during the playoffs last, se last season when he averaged 2.6 yards per carry, under 2.6 yards per carry, actually. From a fantasy perspective, though, it's extremely important to note that John Shipley told us on our Franchise Focus podcast last month that the Jaguars really trust Robinson in pass protection, which could put a damper on Travis Etienne's passing down work. Etienne is a third-round pick on Underdog Fantasy, while Robinson is going in the 13th, 14th round. Obviously, Etienne is more explosive, he's a better receiver, and Robinson's Achilles recovery might make him sluggish for at least a little bit. But remember that ETN, too, is coming off a serious injury for running backs. A list Frank sprain, though, of course, his was suffered last preseason. There's obvious risk to drafting ETN at his ADP, even if you love his upside. You just have to swallow that risk. Let's head out wide, where we're discussing two rookies today. The first is in Chicago. The Bears' Vilas Jones, a third-round pick out of Tennessee, has, quote, hit the ground running in his first training camp, per a uh, Peter King uh, spot that he did from Bears training camp on YouTube, and he could be ticketed for major playing time right out of the gates after a few camp injuries at wide receiver. Indeed, the Bears wide receiver position is a disaster right now. Nikhil Harry is looking at an extended absence after suffering a high ankle sprain, which will likely keep him out for at least the season opener, even if he makes this roster. Chicago also gave Byron Pringle nearly $4 million in guaranteed money this offseason, so he's not going anywhere. But the problem is, he suffered a quad injury that seems pretty gnarly. He's without a timeline for return. The Bears then lost David Moore to a serious leg injury on August 9th. That was yesterday. Oh my goodness. The Bears already had one of the league's worst wide receiver cores behind Darnell Mooney before the injury concerns. And Valus Jones is an older prospect at 25 years old, so you know they're going to let get, have to get him on the field early if you're looking for a dart throw late in your best ball drafts. Heck, Peter King himself called Jones a very interesting prospect from a fantasy perspective. Peter King's out there on the fantasy streets giving advice. Jones is going to play, King said, and the Bears have, quote, big intentions for him. Based on the rest of this depth chart, the Bears don't have a choice. At our other wide receiver spot, a rookie is earning rare praise from Bill Belichick. Now, look, look just look at that picture there. You know, our guy Ben Kukanis is producing the, the, the daily lineup. He produces it every day. That is not a linebacker, okay? That is Tyquan Thornton. Uh, the Patriots think so little of their rookies that they put them in offensive line numbers in training camp. But uh, remember last year, Mac Jones wore number 50. So that, that that's one of Bill Belichick's weird things. Anyway. Tyquan Thornton is earning rare praise from Bill Belichick. And Belichick said on Tuesday that Thornton is, quote, picking things up. He's smart, according to beat reporter Mike Giardi of NFL.com. And Giardi also noted that Thornton is flashing every day and is a natural hands catcher. Indeed, Thornton got his most work so far with the first team during Tuesday's practice, indicating that that's not just smoke. He is picking things up. The Patriots were lambasted for picking Thornton in the second round by the draft Twitterati, which didn't hold a particularly high opinion of Thornton. They may well be right. 
But just to throw a counter opinion out there, our Greg Cosell did like Thornton's tape as he highlighted in our 2022 prospect guide. And he said on a live stream after the draft that the big, this is one of my favorite quotes, by the way, that the biggest difference he saw between Thornton and Chris Olave, the number 11 overall pick to the Saints out of Ohio State, was merely the logo on his helmet. Still, I have to defer to my friend Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald, who told me that while the Patriots staff is extremely pleased with Thornton, their top three wide receivers are absolutely locked in at this point. Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, and Devontae Parker. Callahan also told me that Myers has been the Pats' most consistent camp performer. Bourne has faded after a hot start, and Parker has only recently rebounded from a cold spell. Perhaps that's why Thornton has been getting more first-team reps, and Callahan agreed with me that there are worse things you can do with your last pick in a best ball draft than picking Thornton for his big play upside. Just don't expect him to be a consistent redraft asset. But he's been undervalued in dynasty drafts as well, and he's somebody who, if you haven't had yours yet, I'd be looking to pick up in the middle rounds of your rookie drafts. At flex is someone who hasn't gotten on the field at all, and that's the Raiders' Darren Waller. Waller has now missed about two weeks of practices with an undisclosed injury, which isn't all that concerning until you remember that his 2021 campaign was derailed by injuries. He missed one game with an ankle sprain and five more with a knee sprain. It was a disappointing campaign in general for Waller when he posted a 19 target, 10 catch, 105 yard and a touchdown line in prime time in week one last season. It looked like he was going to be the next player to totally break the tight end position for fantasy. And then Things just went by the wayside. After that week one explosion, Waller had only one more game during the 2021 season with 10 or more targets, only one more 100-yard game, and only one more touchdown. In fact, Waller finished just three times as a top five weekly tight end, making him a major bust at the position, despite the Raiders really only having one other reliable passing target, that being Hunter Renfro. Now, of course, they have more than one reliable passing target. You might have heard of that Devontae Adams guy. And Waller isn't even on the field in new coach Josh McDaniel's offense picking things up. In fact, his absence has been so mysterious that beat writer Tashawn Reed for the Athletic quipped last night that he spotted Waller courtside at the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces game. Am I panicking? Not really. It's an undisclosed injury. If it was something serious, we'd probably know about it. But this could make me even less likely to draft Waller after the bad taste he gave all of us for fantasy last year. I'm Joe Dolan, and this has been the Fantasy Points Daily Lineup for Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. Head to fantasypoints.com for all your fantasy draft needs, including the aforementioned prospect guide from Greg Cosell, which has been discounted 60% to celebrate the start of the NFL season. We also have Debbie profiles from our guy Wes Huber in there. If you're a sicko and love Devi, which I, I, Wes got me in a Devi leak, look, uh, it's fun. It really is. I didn't think I'd enjoy it, but I do. Also, if you use code lineup22, you can get 10% off extra, an extra 10% off any package at fantasypoints.com this year. I hope you check it out because we have big things planned. I'll catch you tomorrow, everyone.